Hey guys, it's Hayley and I'm back with another video. So today I'm actually using my camera which is super exciting. I hope the quality is a bit better. But yeah, let's get straight into the video. So today I'm going to be doing a video on how to pass your driving test. This is for a manual test that I did to about a year ago now. I'm going to show you guys my license card. I actually passed my test on the 2nd of February 2022. I remember because it's like two, 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 too many. You got the picture. I basically wrote down all my notes to help other people on how to pass their test because I know it's super difficult and yeah, I definitely watched a lot of videos <laughs> to pass my test. So the number one rule of driving a manual car is to know that to move off you need to be in gear one. Another thing I want to tell you guys is to make sure that when you're approaching a roundabout, go into gear two and then in gear one if you have to. If you're already already going fast, then go to gear two. But always slow down when you're going into a roundabout because it's quite dangerous to go into a roundabout like full speed. You think you know what's going on but a car could just come. And yeah, I've had very bad experiences at roundabouts. Another thing you guys need to know is always go to the left hand side of the road. Even if you're going to turn right, still be on the left side of the road. Um, I actually was driving on the wrong side of my... <laughs> I was actually driving on the wrong side of the road. Like literally <laughs> almost up until my exam. Um, I actually did it twice to pass. So if, if you were wondering. But um I got it eventually. Stay to the left. Even if you're going right, stay to the left. Make sure that you don't stop too early. When you're at a T-junction, you want to make sure that you're kind of towards the end of the line so you can see both left and right before you're going to turn. If you are too like behind, then it's hard for you to see and then it's, it's just complicated. So go to the line when you're at a T-junction. Something else that's really important is that when you're on a motorway, make sure that you stay in your lane. And I know it sounds really simple, but staying in your lane is actually quite hard on the motorway. motorway um... So yeah, you don't want to be too close to the curb because that can affect your tyres and you don't want to be broken down in the middle of a motorway. <laughs> so make sure you try to stay in the middle of your lane as possible. I had an incident where I tried to get in the faster lane and it just didn't go well. So even a two, two millimetres to the side, you could, you could get crashed. Centimetres. Another important thing... <laughs> Another important thing is that when you're on a hill, make sure that when you're finding the braking, is it the braking point? No. The biting point. <laughs> Sorry, I had to look at my notes. Uh, when you're finding out the biting point, make sure that once you found the biting point, sometimes some cars need a bit more gas to actually move than others. I had to do this with my with the car that I was doing my test in. I had to add more gas when I was on the biting point, otherwise the car just wouldn't move. Another thing that I had to learn was that you don't have to stop at every line or every T-junction unless there's giveaway lines or there's a stop sign, then you have to stop and give way, obviously. But if it's just a regular line and there's no cars passing, you don't have to stop every time. Otherwise, it gets annoying for other drivers. <laughs> and they will be at you even if you have a pee on the back of your car. Always keep both of your hands on the steering wheel because you know you want to have full control of the car and I know it's all chilled back to be with one hand and it's cool but unless you're changing a gear keep both of your hands on there. <laughs> if you're watching this video because you want to pass your test if you don't have both of your hands on the steering wheel whilst you're in the test, unless you're changing a gear, they will put, put you points down for that. Um, they look at your posture, they look at the way that you look at the mirrors, like all of these stuff is really important when you're in the test, so be aware of that. When you're in a test, I know this is so simple, but if you see an amber light, just slow down. Just don't rush it, don't think you can make it, because like, the test people what are they called examiners if they see that you're like trying to make the amber light and pass it like my driving instructor told me at the time is that the examiner wants to feel safe and if the examiner has a hint of feeling unsafe or uneasy yeah it's, it's you're not gonna pass your test you want to make the examiner feel as comfortable in the car as possible and that's like one of the secrets to passing your test, really. They smell nerves, okay. If you're nervous, it's good to be nervous, but have some confidence. 
obviously don't be cocky and have too much confidence but just the right amount is good because they can they can feel fear i'm telling you they're scary people <laughs> When you're going into another road, slow down. Even like if you're going really fast and you're gonna turn into another road, like slow down because you never know, like you don't wanna be too quick when you're changing roads. Mirrors, let's talk about the mirrors. So you're probably wondering like, when do I look at the mirrors? When is the right time? When should I be watching the mirrors? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. If you're in moving traffic, look at your mirror to see what's behind you. Um, when you're moving off, check your blind spots, as in that mirror, that mirror. Another thing to be wary of are bicycles and pedestrians. Because you could look once and then move, but they could just come out of nowhere. Like, a lady in a pram could just be on the, like, crossing randomly and you've already moved off. Like, you need to be 100% sure that there's no bicycles, no pedestrians when you're moving to the left or to the right and if you see a crossing and there's a person walking beside the crossing slow down because sometimes they don't look like they're gonna cross the crossing but they will and then if you're like passing whilst they want to cross it's not it's not gonna be a good now you're probably thinking oh you've just been telling me to go so slowly like no 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 there's a time to be slow and then there's also a time to be like quick if like you can it's so complicated but driving like you can also get marked down if you're too slow as in if you're doing 21 miles per hour on a 30 mile road it's too slow like you want to be doing at least 25 to 26 miles per hour if the road is clear do the least you can do is five less than the actual number it is any less than that and it's bad so yeah if the road is clear then feel free to go ahead with um the right speed you do not have to stop for pedestrians if they're on the little island stand i don't i think that's what it's called like you know when it's not a crossing but they're just on the stand you don't have to stop for them then because you have priority because i made this mistake in my um when i was doing my lessons and i was in the car and i saw like pedestrians on the on the island stand so i stopped so they could pass and my driving instructor was like what are you doing like don't do that unless it's a crossing because you're gonna hold up the traffic so yeah in this in that case pedestrians don't have priority but if it's a crossing like a zebra crossing then they have priorities so yeah make sure you don't stop for them on island stands this is important because i actually did this in my test but when you're for example in a roundabout and you're gonna indicate right or indicate left or whatever you're indicating make sure that once your maneuver is done that you turn off the indicator otherwise it can be misleading for other drivers and the examiners will mark you down on that so yeah i forgot to leave my i i left my indicator on and it was a bit annoying during my test always make sure that you leave like a big enough gap where you can like for example if the car in front of you like breaks down or something you can move off or around the car uh don't go too close to the car in front of you because it's gonna make your life really hard if something happens so always keep that in mind i personally um, use the tesco and ikea parking lot to practice my maneuvers with my mom's car um but i also did it in my lessons i had like a multiple lessons i think i did like 35 to 40 hours of lessons with five different instructors so if you're putting yourself down because you haven't passed your test don't worry like it's a very long process any of your friends relatives have a car i would ask them to help you practice in like for example public car parks like that there's loads of tricks that um instructors teach you for in regards to parking uh for example in parallel parking you have to go like this 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 <laughs> but i always struggle even after i got my driver's license like people were helping me park <laughs> like guiding me and stuff um but yeah so my favorite parking personally is the reverse parking just because i feel like when you're reverse parking you can look at the both of the mirrors and if you see the lines in both your mirrors you know that you're gonna be in the box so that's why i just love reverse parking because it's just so easy and obviously front bay parking is good as well but i find reverse parking easier than front bay so let me know what's your favorite parking and yeah like if this video has helped you don't stress too much because that is not good for your mental health <laughs> bye guys